Picture this. You're at work and your colleagues are debating a new project over a pizza lunch. Unfortunately, you're allergic to gluten. You can't participate fully because you're focused on finding something else to eat. Or perhaps you're a vegetarian and all the pizzas are loaded with meat toppings. It's a simple oversight, but it makes you feel excluded. This seemingly insignificant moment is a microcosm of a larger issue in workplaces today. Traditional practices in many organizations often unconsciously tend to favor majority groups. Whether it's based on dietary needs, cultural customs or religious observances, these little oversights can result in some team members feeling left out. People who don't feel included in the work culture will feel less satisfied and engaged in their work and be absent more often. This is a one-way ticket to losing valuable employees. Hi, I'm Nelly, and in this Learning Byte, you will learn about diversity and inclusion, its benefits and five best practices to make your organization more diverse. But before we dive in, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Let's start with definitions. Diversity in the workplace is about embracing a wide range of individual differences within an organization. It includes race, gender, and sexual orientation, but also age, religion, ethnicity, language, where you live, socioeconomic background, disability status, and more. Each factor forms a unique part of an individual's identity, influencing their contributions to the workplace. Let's take age as an example. In every organization, you will have different generations of people working together. You have younger employees who only recently joined the workforce, who bring in fresh ideas, and they may be eager to try out new concepts. On the other hand, you have employees with decades worth of experience. Both groups have different strengths that complement each other and can create an inclusive, dynamic, and productive work environment. And of course, most people carry different identities. For example, an employee could be a young, disabled woman of color. She has had unique lived experiences based on the intersect of her age, disability, gender, and race. These overlaps of identities is what we call intersectionality. These unique lived experiences help an organization understand its customers better. This is one of the individual benefits of DNI in the workplace, but there are many more. Employees who have a strong sense of belonging at work, love their job, are happier in their role, feel safe and take care of their physical and mental well-being. On the team level, a stronger sense of belonging helps people share their opinions more freely. Also, a culture where everyone's ideas are valued leads to greater innovation and problem solving. On the organizational level, employees who feel like they belong at work rarely think about switching jobs and are the most productive. So. Diversity and inclusion is about making both employees and the business thrive. Let's now dive into five best practices and strategies for fostering diversity and inclusion. Our first best practice is to lead by example. DNI efforts should start at the top. A leadership team committed to DNI can set the tone for the entire organization. And the numbers prove it. Inclusive leaders can boost employees' feeling of inclusiveness by a whopping 70%. Imagine feeling 70% more welcome at work every day. But the benefits of inclusive and committed leadership don't stop there. Leaders committed to DNI can increase team performance and team collaboration, as well as improve decision making quality. Research has found that committed leaders across countries share six core traits. First, they show visible commitment by openly discussing diversity and keeping others accountable. Second, they show courage by admitting when they are wrong and seeking the contribution of experts. Third, they are aware of bias and put transparent processes in place and follow these processes themselves. Fourth, committed leaders are curious and actively seek perspectives and opinions different than their own. Fifth, they show cultural intelligence by actively learning about different cultures and a adapting their communication style for cross-cultural encounters. And lastly, they are collaborative and empower employees to make individual decisions about issues that impact their work. HR can play a key role in enabling leaders to show these qualities in the organization. Next, let's zoom in on unbiased recruitment and hiring practices. Every one of us is biased. We naturally gravitate towards people with similar experience and backgrounds. In recruiting, this means that you might unconsciously like the candidate who went to the same college, lives in the same neighborhood, or is into the same sport. This is why it's important to be aware of your own bias when hiring and sourcing new employees. Using unbiased recruitment practices will help correct bias 
by hiring based on skills and experience rather than personal preference. An example of this is blind hiring, which is the process of evaluating candidates without knowing any of their personal information, such as their name or gender, for instance. Other examples include establishing diverse interview panels, which help to reduce bias, or blind auditions that are now common practice for orchestras. Here, the performer is concealed, so the judges only hear the music and don't see the performer to prevent bias. An inclusive workplace culture doesn't just happen on its own. Our third best practice is to cultivate an inclusive workplace culture. Inclusivity means that all voices are heard. To create an inclusive workplace culture, start by promoting open dialogue and respectful communication. You can set the stage for this by hosting regular team meetings where everyone feels encouraged to share their ideas. Or you can develop a code of conduct that promotes respect for all viewpoints and backgrounds. Next. Consider fostering employee resource groups and affinity networks. These are groups where employees with similar interests or identities can come together. They help build connections, provide support and promote a sense of belonging. Lastly, it's essential to ensure equal opportunities for growth and development. This could involve offering consistent training opportunities to all staff, implementing transparent performance reviews and establishing clear, unbiased promotion criteria. Of course. Culture is also created organically through daily interactions and is a continuous process of juggling many moving parts. It requires consistent effort, but the rewards are well worth it. Just like cultivating an inclusive workplace culture requires an integrated approach, so does the promotion of diversity and inclusion in the organization. That's why our next best practice is using a holistic approach to diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. Research shows that diversity training on its own is often ineffective. To become inclusive, you need to change your culture, which requires a holistic change management approach. This is a multifaceted strategy encompassing everything from recruitment policies to workplace culture and from leading by example to promoting underrepresented groups. A holistic approach to DNI involves everyone. Ongoing learning and open dialogue are key as well as sharing experiences and perspectives to better understand where others are coming from. Inviting speakers from various backgrounds can offer unique insights and promote empathy and understanding. On top of that, transparent metrics should be set to measure progress and enforce accountability. Inclusion isn't a one-off task, but a continual journey requiring everyone's commitment. With persistence, organizations can become not just diverse, but truly inclusive fostering innovation and unity in the workplace. Ultimately, it is all about creating an environment where diversity and inclusion are part of the workplace's very fabric. Finally, we have inclusive communication. Language is a living thing and it evolves with time, but it also reflects bias and preconceived notions. Think about the word businessman or fireman. These terms imply that these professions are exclusively represented by men, which is not the case. By using these terms, we automatically exclude half of the world population who could make great contributions to these professions. Using inclusive language is an easy way to show respect and understanding to your employees. Here are some examples. Avoid using terms that diminish an individual's capabilities. For example, rather than saying someone is disabled, say they have a disability. Be inclusive when referring to race, ethnicity and religion by using inclusive terms such as BIPOC, Black, Indigenous and People of Color or multi-faith. Encourage staff to refrain from using gendered words like the guys, chairman or cleaning ladies, which can lead to exclusion. On top of that, Establish a culture of continual learning and adaptation to keep up with the evolution of inclusive language. And there you have it. In today's Learning Byte, you've learned about diversity and inclusion and why it's important for any organization. As you can see, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. DNI is all about combining different approaches and making continuous efforts towards an inclusive workplace. Of course. DNI is far more complex than this and cannot be completely explained in one video. But if you want to learn more about it, we got you covered. Check out our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Belonging or DEIB certificate program. This program will teach you everything you need to know to create an inclusive and safe workplace for all. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button. See you next time. Bye.